I'm Carrie Gross. I'm the Library Literacy Specialist for Butte County Library Literacy Services, and I'm also a California Literacy Medal Fellow. Today's topic is Advocacy Basics. Think of the adult learners who come to your program. What do you think some of the feelings they have coming to a program for the very first time? What would some of those feelings be? Scared, nervous, uncomfortable, unsure of what to expect, maybe a little bit excited and hopeful, but overall, just worried. What's it going to be like? I know the adult learners that I work with share that they feel that way that very first time. Now, think about the feelings that come to mind for you when you think about going to visit your state legislator for the first time to tell them about the library and literacy services. What kinds of feelings come to mind for you? Worried, uncomfortable, unsure of what to say, wondering if it really makes a difference, and overall, just a feeling of uneasiness? Well, that describes me to a T when I think about going and visiting my state legislator, or actually even talking publicly. It's not something that comes naturally to me. And I can remember back early in the 90s during the New Reader Conference, the New Readers were gathered from California, all over from California, and they were in different workshops sharing with each other. And I was out in the lobby staffing one of the info tables with Joan Conan Sheldon. Do you know her? If you didn't know her personally, you've probably seen some of the wonderful things she's brought to literacy in, through the years. She was a wonderful trainer, worked in the jails, and did a lot to develop California library literacy in the early days. Well, Joan was asking me, how's it going, Carrie? She knew that I was new, and I told her how exciting I found the field, but that one thing I was really struggling with was all this public talking. I know that it was important, but it was something that I just wasn't very comfortable with. And she told me, Carrie, when you really have something to say, you'll find those words and they'll come to you. And I can't think, help but think how those words ring so true today in terms of the library's literacy services here in California. We're 22 years old and we have so much to say and so much to share. So many extraordinary stories that other people need to hear. And that leads us to today's topic of advocacy basics. Yeah. As we consider advocacy, there are many different types and levels of advocacy. There's public awareness that includes publicity, marketing, public relations. There's media advocacy. And, of course, importantly, our adult learner leader development advocacy movement throughout the state. We're going to talk a little bit more about the adult learner's role. But today's topic really focuses on legislative advocacy. California Literacy did a survey two years ago of literacy programs throughout California. This was inclusive of library literacy programs. A survey of the needs. And one of the needs that kept coming up, people were saying, we need to know more about advocacy. And that leads us to where we are in today's topic. And keep in mind, I'm going to be talking today about legislative advocacy on a state level. While many of the things that I'll be addressing also relate to advocacy on the local level, talking with your city council, talking to your board of supervisor, as well as on a federal level, talking with folks back in Washington, D.C. So we're going to keep in mind that we're talking about the state level today. And I think before we go any further, a definition of advocacy is in order. And if you consider, there are so many different, different definitions, as you would imagine. And most of these involve identifying and embracing a cause, promoting a cause, attempting to shape public opinion. And I can't help but think, don't we already do that so well already? So many magnificent happen things happening throughout the state on this level. 
I wanted to look at things a little bit deeper today, and I was fortunate recently to hear Dr. Kenneth Haycock, who is the director and professor at San Jose State for the Library Information Sciences, speak about advocacy at the State Library. And he brought a different definition that I think better suits our discussion today. His definition, as you can see, is a planned, deliberate, sustained effort to develop understanding and support incrementally over time. And I think a key word here is it's a sustained effort. And that's something important to keep in mind. It's not something that's just done one time and you're done and it's over with. It's something that's an ongoing effort and it's a coordinated effort. I think it's important for us also to consider the many reasons why folks don't choose to take part in legislative activities. I did an informal survey a few months ago of the library literacy programs throughout the state. And I heard back from folks many different things. Some people said, oh, I just really don't have time to do this. I am so busy here locally. And I wouldn't know what to say if I were to take part. Other folks said that they just really weren't sure how to go about it or how the whole system worked. And then there were those folks who said, you know what, it just really doesn't seem like it makes any difference and that it just doesn't matter. A couple that come to mind, somebody else said, I plead ignorant on all accounts. I think that was fun, her honesty. And another gentleman who responded that it all just seems so canned and just doesn't seem very real. So along with those feelings of being uncomfortable and not knowing how the system works, and these other reasons why people don't choose to take part, I'm hoping that we will, that I will address some of these different issues today. And now I'd like to move into why take part in legislative activities. There are so many different reasons why it's important for us to take part in these different activities. For one thing, advocacy is education. We're educating, whether it's the state assemblymen, their offices, or our senators, they need to hear from us and they need to hear about the wonderful services and the impact that we're having in our state. They need to be aware and it's our opportunity to educate them. Also, they need our expertise. We've been doing this for a long time. We have wonderful supporters at the State Library. They need to hear from us that about these many different exciting things. Also, there's power in numbers. Perhaps you've heard Carla Lane use the phrase, the 800-pound gorilla. Doesn't that illustrate just who we are? We are so strong. We have so many things to offer. So think of us as that 800-pound gorilla in the room. And consider why take part now? It's not as though we're in need of funding specifically now. We've been pretty well supportive and haven't taken any big cuts recently. Good things are going on. Why should we get involved now? Well, it's just because we don't need anything right now that we should be taking part. This is our chance to introduce ourselves and let these folks know just all that we're doing. It's kind of an entree. We're in a position to be very positive because we're not asking for something. And it also gives us the opportunity to see how this huge system works. It's quite something and it's important for us to become prepared. And when you think about the greatest reason why we should get involved right now is because we're representing 20,000 adults in California who traditionally have not had a voice at this level. What more important reason is there? Dr. Haycock also in his discussion describes advocacy as a system of deposits and withdrawals. I think that this is an interesting way to look at it. We're poised to be making those deposits now talking about the wonderful things happening in the state, sharing those stories of adult learners who have made such a difference in their own lives 
in the lives of their family members, as well as throughout communities and as a state. We can make these deposits. And should there come a need where we need to make some sort of a withdrawal and look to them for some help and some support to make things happen, they'll know who we are and they'll know that it's well worth their attention and their assistance. As we're visiting state legislators, we can share all the wonderful things happening in the libraries, and that time is now. Many of you will remember Al Bennett, who continues to be a strong supporter of literacy. And when I was in touch with him, even though he's back on the East Coast, he's still very interested in the success of the CLLS services. He was a literacy consultant at the state some time ago. And he described it to me as chips. We'll put in our chips as best we can now, and should we ever need them, we'll be able to use those chips at a later time. So for all these reasons, it's important that we get involved in the advocacy now. Something fun I think that Dr. Haycock described was the first big step in advocacy is showing up. And isn't that so true in so many things that we do in providing literacy services? You go to that meeting, you happen to sit next to somebody, and the next thing you know, you have this great new project all mapped out. And it wouldn't have happened if you wouldn't have shown up. Or maybe you decide to go ahead and submit some sort of a proposal to seek funding. And you get it, and you're able to do a lot of different new things, and it's only because you showed up and sent it on in. So keep in mind that the first big step in advocacy is showing up. Okay. As a library-based literacy program services, we are so fortunate, and this is why. As a library service, we're eligible to be part of the California Library Association, also known as CLA. Now, why is this so important? Well, the California Library Association is composed of professionals, of library workers, librarians, as well as individuals in the community who strongly support literacy, excuse me, who strongly support libraries. It's a professional organization. It's a place where skills can be gained, networking happens. It's a large organization. As a literacy service, in the past years, we were part of California Library Association, but on a very small scale. We had what's called a round table. And pretty much that meant once a year, liter people who were interested in literacy would gather at CLA's annual conference to meet and to share. But it was seen that we could be much more than a round table. And two years ago, Action was taken, petitions were submitted, and over 150 people said that having literacy at a higher level at, as a literacy section, this new classification, was something that was important. And we were able to establish that with this support. So folks throughout California who are involved with the library raised their hand and said this was something that we wanted to do. And there are so many benefits that we've seen by becoming a member. And you can help with this by becoming a personal member of California Library Association. In your handouts, you'll see the new document, the top 10 reasons you should join CLA and the literacy section. You'll find more information here, including participating once a year in a conference, this year, the conference is going to be in Sacramento, and hundreds of thousands of folks will be participating. There's also a wonderful listserv that helps you keep up to date with what's going on in libraries throughout California, as well as a terrific website. But in terms of advocacy, there are, very, there are other very important benefits. By being this literacy section and having the support of so many, and being a literacy section, we have access to lobbyists who can speak on our behalf in Sacramento. Our lobbyists are Mike and Christina Dillon. It's a father-daughter team. 
and they're able to represent the library's in interests while other folk, you know, we're all doing our work there in Sacramento, keeping monitoring the interests, keeping a tap on things. And we've already seen the benefits of our participation as a literacy section. Because we're a literacy section, we have representation on the CLA's legislative board. And Mike and Christina take part in these meetings. And most recently, to give you an idea of some of the benefits to our participation, when Christina Dillon brought to the meeting the suggestion that we forward a resolution to be submitted and authored by the state legislator in legislature in celebration of National Library Week, handouts were passed around. She explained that this was just a draft, that it was something that had been submitted previously in past years. But she asked those at the table to take a look and see if it was something we wanted to go forward with. And she also said that if there were any suggestions, to please just let her know. Well, the library rep, the literacy representative, took a look at this suggestion for the resolution and noticed that literacy wasn't mentioned along with all the whereases, whereas this, whereas that, whereas this and was able to submit the suggestion that the text of the resolution also include adult literacy. And you'll see this resolution that I'm speaking of in your handouts. And right in the center, you'll see how important our service is in providing over 100,000 adults and children in the state of California with literacy service is included and it's only because we were at that legislative committee level because of our participation in the literacy section. And as well, when the initial resolution wasn't forwarded by the initial author, the Dillons worked very hard to find another author to make sure that this whole resolution would go forward. And by a series of crazy circumstances, when the literacy text was left out, they were right back in there working to make sure that it got back in. So by having access to these lobbyists is very important and we only have it because of our membership, individual memberships in CLA. CLA also provides different opportunities for us to practice our legislative skills. And one of these is called Library Legislative Day and the other is Day in the District. To give you an idea of what happens in Library Legislative Day, you may have heard about it. We talk about it somewhat on the listserv. But it is once a year, folks gather together, library folks, in Sacramento to go and visit state legislators to talk about the library. It's usually held towards the end of April, the end of April, and it's something that you can take part in simply by visiting the CLA website. And to give you an idea of what happens during this day, if you were to attend Library Legislative Day, you would likely, or you would arrive early and gather with over one, hundreds and hundreds of librarians and library workers and friends of the library. They usually have a big kind of a kickoff meeting and get you set up with some materials. This year, fortunately, again, because of the, our participation at such a strong level, we were in, able to include our information about CLLS services, as well as the National Assessment of Adult Literacy information. All these were handouts that were given out in the morning. And then you go off and you meet with your state legislators. Different appointments are scheduled throughout the course of the day and you go and visit your folks who are representing you in Sacramento to talk about literacy well really to talk about the library is the goal but what greater chance to be able to talk also about literacy services as one of the wonderful things that happens in the library now in thinking about making a visit and going up to Sacramento and just what all you want to say and how you want to go about it. If you're like me, it's probably a good idea 
to have a civics review. My civics education goes back, I'm sorry to say, probably to watching Saturday morning cartoons and watching Bill talk about his escapades on Capitol Hill. And here, I think I hear Bill now. I'm just a Bill, yes I'm only a Bill, and I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. Well, it's Is that long, familiar long, to you? Journey. If so, and you'd love to see the words to all of Bill, you can find him also in your handouts. But on a more serious note, I didn't remember how does a bill become a law? What is all the jargon that goes along with what happens up in Sacramento? And I've found some very interesting information. And for example, this is the legislative process, a citizen's guide to participation. And it gives a, a review, even as far as how to address your envelope if you want to write to your state legislator. There are some key things to remember as far as that goes to be taken seriously. There's a map of how a bill does become a law. And there's also a good bit of information about the language. There's a glossary. How fortunate. Words like caucus, um, conference committee. Kind of I have a vague sort of meaning associated with those words, but really when it comes down to it, it's very vague. This is information that's available to you. It's free and I have included it on a resource list that you'll find in your handouts. Um, it's entitled Advocacy Basics and it's a resource list. So I would encourage you, because it's a free um, publication, it's, you know, it's not an expense to you and you can also request to have multiple copies. I actually visited the office and was able to take 30 away because I told them I was going to be sharing them with some other folks. So I think it's very helpful. Then there are things like just knowing what your state legislators look like. I had kind of the embarrassing situation where on my first day to Library Literacy Day, I was fortunate to go along with our library director, which was great. She helped me to see how it all worked. And as I was sitting there in the office of our first person that we were visiting, it was a senator, and I was surrounded by other people also making the visit, this gentleman entered. And you know what? I didn't know if that was the man or a staff assistant. I felt very unprepared and uneasy. So I would suggest finding out just who you're going to be talking to. I think it'll be very helpful. Um, this is another publication. It's called the Pocket Directory of the California Legislature. And this is something that's available to you, and I think it's very helpful. This takes, will give you, provide a picture of who you're going to be visiting. Um, for instance, here's one of my guys, and I can tell, oh, he's married, he has four children. It tells what he does, where he went to school, what counties he's served, very helpful. Where the key offices are, it lists as staff members. It also lists the different legislative interests that he has. It, well, it captures for each person their top legislative interests. Unfortunately, in my area, education isn't listed for any of the folks who are representing us up there. But under one of our people, they've listed health care. And that information is helpful for me because I'm going to know when I go and visit his office that it would probably be a good idea for me to talk about how literacy relates to health care and health literacy and to talk from that angle. So this is very important information. And for those of you who, like me, and in my informal surveying, I find out that I'm not alone, who really don't know who your state legislators are, it's OK and know that you're not alone. I talked with people in all different avenues and they were embarrassed to say they didn't know, but it's so easy to find out. You can go online and visit www.leginfo.ca.gov. That's leginfo.ca.gov. 
and it's also listed in your handouts. And all you need to do is type in your zip code and it'll help you with getting the information you need. As well, you can go and visit one of our favorite sites in literacy services, the Easy Voter Guide or easyvoter.org and it will also help you with that information. So you're not alone. Now what to talk about or how to prepare for your visit. Dr. Haycock shared this and I thought that it was suitable for us today. What to consider during your visit? Keep it basic. Okay? And in keeping it basic, that B means keep it brief. Keep it simple and in layman's terms. We have all of our jargon that we don't even know is jargon anymore. Our FFL, our MLLS, our LE, this, and our learner-centered, goal-directed. They need to hear about it in very plain language. So and remember that you're talking with somebody who doesn't know very much about your services, most likely. And the A, be appreciative when making that visit. In hearing legislators share their stories, they said that very oftentimes people come in angry or have really have a bone to pick. But keep in mind you want to be appreciative of their time and just the opportunity to talk with them on a positive level. S, keep it specific. You're going to want to be on point and you'll want to be prepared. Their time is limited and so you need to make the best of it. And that I, be informative. Here is your chance to educate. Make the most of it. Be informative and really capture all that you want to try and say. C, be courteous. You're going to be there for a short amount of time. You know, be mindful of that. They have other appointments and other things that they, they need to tend to through the course of the day. So they have a real strict time schedule. So you want to be courteous. In terms of things that I've taken along with me in the past, I think it's nice to take along some information about your program. To give you an idea of some of these things that I've included, we're bringing an overview of our program, of our local program, as well as I did kind of a summary of our roles and goals results for the course of a year. And it was really exciting to be able to say, you know, in our community, the community that you're representative, representing, 12 people for the very first time were able to read to their child or 10 people were able to read a medicine label for the first time. You, you're going to want to make your message local, 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 and really tell the stories and illustrate what's happening in the program. I also took along a letter from a, an adult learner. I really wanted them to be represented. And this last year, I took along information about our upcoming, upcoming fundraiser. It was a bocce ball event. And while the gentleman I was talking to in one case, the, our legislator, was very polite and listened to everything I had to say about our, the neat things our program is doing, it was this bocce ball that he really perked up his ears about and I had included two tickets. So we'll see if he turns out for our big bocce ball event. So those sorts of things. And so many of the programs, I know you have wonderful publications of your adult learner writings, what a wonderful thing to bring along. It may be that you just have a few minutes to talk about the library literacy programs, but if you have a pamphlet prepared, it's something that you can leave behind with them and that they can add to, at least add to their files and a marker. Something to consider when you're making your visit also is that you may not meet with the exact legislator. Sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. But should you happen to meet with a staff member, please don't think that that lessens the impact of your visit. Meeting with a staff person is a good thing. It's those staff people that are helping the legislator to understand what's happening in their district or their area. They're very influential. They can be very helpful to you too. As well, I've heard from people in the know that Working with staffers is a good thing. With term limits in Sacramento, it's the staff that tends to stay over. 
Um, and so they could be a consistent contact for you in Sacramento. So it's great to develop these sorts of, um, these sorts of relationships as well with the staffers. Um, and again, they've been very supportive whenever I've talked with them or gone back to them for a question. Okay. Other things to consider during your visit is to be concise. Listen, really listen two ways. It may be that you're familiar with your legislator and perhaps they're not very supportive of education or have some concerns. Be prepared for the, any sort of opposition. Of course, you'll want to take along statistics and information about your program at the local level. Be confident in the information that you're presenting because it just may be that they have a question and you're going to want to be able to adequately answer it. Um, I mentioned before about telling your story and keeping it local and keeping it real. What better way than to bring along a tutor or even an adult learner to share firsthand their experiences about the wonderful things library literacy programs do in California. And what a great experience for them to go and actually be part of this incredible system that organizes our, our California state. I talked with Susan Lynn from Contra Costa County. I know that she oftentimes goes to Library Legislative Day and makes other sorts of visits. And very many times she will bring along an adult learner or two to do just this. And I asked her how she prepared them for what to expect and she keeps it basic in preparing the adult learner. She lets them know that it's going to be a very long day, that they're going to be making visits, and that they may have an opportunity to speak, and that at that time they should just speak from the heart. There's no right or wrong answers, and just share what the experience has meant to them in their lives. As far as more formally preparing an adult learner to do a visit like this, getting them involved in the Henry Huffman Institute that's been so exciting to see the works that the learners have been doing. That would be a neat way to go about it. So these are just some things to keep in mind about making those visits. Of course, also one more thing, while you're visiting, you're really going to want to make sure there's a balance. We're not there to speak out only about literacy. We want to really strike up the tremendous value of literacy being in the library and that we're really excited about the library having literacy services, that we're working so closely together. So it's not a us and them, it's a really a we opportunity. And also in talking with Susan Lynn, she talks about the other benefits to going to Library Legislative Day as well as the chance for the learners to see what it's like as well as the legislators hearing the messages that are to be shared. She says that when you make those visits, you're surrounded by other people, many of them from your own library. Perhaps there are friends of the library representative, the library director, the reference librarian, the children's librarian, from your library, from libraries in your surrounding districts. She said that it is just the perfect opportunity for these key folks also to hear about the wonderful things that are happening in literacy services, which makes perfect sense. It seems like sometimes it's the very people that we're elbow to elbow with, shoulder to shoulder, really don't know all the exciting things. So in addition, there's another benefit to making those visits. Yeah. Some things to consider after your visit. After your visit, it's a great idea to kind of debrief and go over in your mind, perhaps you went with somebody, things that went well with what you shared, um, things that you'd want to be sure and include next time. You know how a, fast a year can go by and the next thing you know, you, you can't quite remember just where to get started. So it'll help you get set for the next year or the next time you visit your legislator locally. So that's a good thing to do. But also, Write a thank you note, a handwritten thank you note. We have our beautiful note cards from the State Library. What a great way to say thank you to your legislator for taking the time and for hearing more, um, that you look forward to being in touch with them. And if you, during your meeting, had said, oh, I'll be, you know, I have some more information to you, or perhaps something came up and you want to get that person more information, be sure to follow up. I talked with the 
staff member who said when someone actually follows up, it's like real brownie points in their mind. Um, I guess so often folks don't do that. So that's something that's pretty easy that you can do. And for even more brownie points, she said, follow up and check to make sure that they got the information that you directed to them. She said that really puts you in high mind in, in their eyes. So. And following the visit, there's other ways that you can extend this relationship. These are also known as those deposits that I mentioned earlier. In addition to writing a thank you note, keep the offices aware of other things that are happening in your program, whether it's through a newsletter that you remember to send to them regularly as well as to the folks in your program. Um, invite them to your next event. That's fun. It's always fun to be invited someplace. Perhaps take a picture during your visit, I don't know, and send that to them and how much you enjoyed being able to see them in Sacramento. Some people have said, suggested even sending birthday cards and the like, but, and I don't know if that's something you'd want to do, but I think you get the idea. You really want to nurture and develop this relationship and to sustain it. And I think that I have a couple of scenarios that illustrate the impact these sorts of things can have on future visits. My first time going to Library Legislative Day, I was very nervous. And as I said, I went with our library director. So that was great. I could just kind of tag along with her. Well, I went and made the visits, little fly on the wall, and just watched how it all happened. Well, at lunchtime, I met with Kathy and Daya, you know, the director for Project Read in Redwood City. It was neat how the timing worked out. We were able to have lunch. And then I went with Kathy to make her visits. Well, well I was unsure of who even the that person was, as I described earlier, when the man made the entrance into the office. Kathy's experience was very different. We were seated in the office, and it was of one of the senators who has been known for his tremendous support of the library through the years. And he looked around the room, and oh, there was Kathy and Daya from Redwood City, and he was all excited to get to see Kathy. How wonderful to see you. How's that trivia be? He'd been an MC in the past and was he just knew her. So right there, you know, she was very comfortable talking to him, had a lot to share. The other library people from around the Bay Area who were also under his jurisdiction kind of got put to the side for the moment, but they got to say their hellos. And what a wonderful welcome. And for him, it was like seeing an old friend. Um, another instance, I tagged along with her to visit one of the assemblymen from her area, and he was a new person. He'd just been elected and had been up there for a few months, and we went by the office. He didn't even have a formal schedule visit, as the others did, but she just figured she'd drop off the information, and at least he could know that, that Project Reed had been there and was represented. So we went into the office, and the receptionist said, oh, you know, the assemblyman is very busy today. He has lots, you know, very busy schedule. And she said, oh, that's fine. Well, it just so happened that the assemblyman walked past the hall right then and looked at her. Oh, Kathy, it's wonderful to see you. And on and on and on, took her into the office, showed him, showed her, you know, his new surroundings. And he had some artwork that he wanted to show her that had been brought in from Redwood City. So what I'm saying is there was that real connection because she'd known him and had invited him to come to the annual barbecue and things like that. So it was a great experience. And I can't help but think that if something was needed in support of her program and she went to these gentlemen, that they would know who she was, they'd be supportive, they'd at least, at the very least, be very willing to listen. Whereas for me, who hasn't or is working on connect, making that sort of a connection, it would be almost like a stranger coming to them asking for assistance. So all of these are very important things to consider. Well, I've talked today about advocacy and made it all sound quite new or something that CLLS hasn't been very involved in in the past, perhaps. Um, it's new to me, but we have a very rich history of being an advocate a, a presence in Sacramento. And I think a wonderful illustration of this is years ago with the Employee Literacy Education Assistance Act. 
and hopefully you've heard about this and are aware that this is something that is on our law books. And to summarize, what it says is that an adult who struggles with reading and writing will not be fearful of losing their job because of these skills. Rather, it is the responsibility of the employer to help them to improve their skills or to find resources for them, to be able to refer them. And um, I don't do it justice, just trying to summarize it there. The labor code is actually included in your handouts and it would be a good thing to have for you to have on file and very important for you to be aware of. But in looking at this labor code, I was so curious to know how did this all come about? You know, how, how did it come about? And I put an email out to the listserv asking if anybody knew the background. And I heard from Leslie Shelton, who was years ago the director in South San Francisco Project Read. And she talked about her experience. She said that Enrique had been included in a task force. And he came back from one of the meetings and said, you know, I need to hear more about how other adult learners have had employee issue, employment issues because of their low literacy skills and um, how can I do this? So they decided that they would go ahead and they sent something out to all the library literacy programs and invited learners to come forward by sharing letters or sharing their experiences. Um, and one woman wrote and talked about being fired from her job because of her poor reading skills. And as Enrique went before a committee to talk about what he'd learned from the adult learners, as I understand it, he had over 100 letters from different people who shared their different experiences, very real experiences. And with this help in hearing from the learners and having Enrique serve as a key point person, this piece of legislation was enacted. So just tremendous. I mean, we have so much to be proud of for library literacy services in California. The work of the learners, the tutors, the volunteers, the extraordinary staff people through the years, our state library consist consultants. Um, in gathering that information, I was fortunate that Leslie included in her response Enrique's email. And I heard from Enrique in response um, to my questions about the Employee Literacy Education Assistance Act. And better than I can say, I think, is, is to share with you today his words. Carrie, as I read this, it brings me back to times when they were tough for adult learners to come out about their reading and writing skills. But look at us now and how far we have moved forward and how much work still needs to be done. I feel very fortunate to be part of this and the people who believe that with a little help we can open some eyes to the needs of literacy programs and how this really works and helps improve the way of life for others. Thank you for all. Thank you all for what you do. You all make our lives better. And that was Enrique that we all know, our beloved Enrique who shares with his, his story so eloquently in Enrique's story. He's done it again. So, in closing, for all these reasons, for the Enriques, for the others that you represent, I encourage you to get out of your comfort zone. If it's icky and you feel uneasy about going to make these visits, Know how important it is that we stick our necks out a little bit. We're always promoting education, lifelong education. Well, consider this part of your lifelong education. We're there together. We're that 800-pound gorilla. We can make a difference, but we need to start making our introductions now. So best wishes to you as you lead off on your journey in advocacy. I'd love to hear from you. I've included my email address, but here to it, hooray for CLLS Library Literacy Services.